what should we expect in 24 in the real estate market? Let's take a minute to look at what some of the best prognosticators in the business are saying. We're going to look at what Keeping Current Matters offers and they aggregate information from all over. This is not exactly what's going to happen in the downtown Chicago real estate market and nobody can say for certain, it's like a crystal ball, but at least it'll give you a sense of what people are thinking today and it'll help you consider what your action should be for the next year. Let's take a look. All right, first of all, home prices. You can see that there is a huge disparity between the mortgage home bankers at 4.1% appreciation to the Chicago, uh, excuse me, to the realtor.com at negative 1.7 in home price forecasting. The average of all of these different people, groups, economists, uh, says that prices are going to go up in 2024 by 1.5%. Keep in mind, 40 year average for real estate across the nation has been 4.9% per year. So 1.5% is lower than typical, or let's just say the average. But given the huge appreciation that we've had over the last couple of years, 1.5% is a good moderate number. Number of home sales across the country. In 2024, NAR, Mortgage Bankers, Fannie Mae, average 5.1 million. If we do 5 mil, 5.1 million, this will be a 20% increase over what was sold in 2023. So it would be a very healthy year. And all three of these are projecting very positive numbers for the year, but it's going to rely, of course, on the combination of buyer demand and inventory. So let's look at those. All right. This is pre-pandemic showing traffic versus 2023. And by that, what I mean is we keep track of the number of showings. And granted, it could be skewed because some people can look at more properties before they make a decision, right? Um, but the truth is the index, quote unquote, was 153 average in 2023 versus 2016 through 2019, which ranged from 103.7 to 112.2. So if showing traffic boots on the ground is an indicator of where the market is in terms of demand, we're there. All right. Zillow's latest market report, November 13th, says despite mortgage rates reaching a 23-year high and low inventory is spurring strong competition. So that's why we haven't seen prices declining. Affordability is going to be a key thing to look at. And it, for those of you who were in the market in 2021 and really felt like things were beyond your grasp and now the sale is over and you can't buy, let, let's put things in perspective. The average ratio of home mortgage to total income is 25%. And when I first got into the business back in 1987, we use that number very strictly. We said you should not spend more than 28% of your gross income on housing. And so that's the blue, black line that you see in front of you. So let's look at that for a minute. Look how cheap, how affordable homes were over the last couple of years. But then today they seemed so out of reach, but it was only 27%. And this chart was done in November when rates were at 7.7. .7. So I would suggest that we're coming back closer to that 25%. And home affordability, while it has been high with the higher rates, we are coming down and we should be in good shape for 2024. Here's a really interesting chart, graph, infographic. I'm not sure what you call it. Um, let me know in the comments. Um, teach me something. Um, this shows by area, the percent change in home prices from 1991 to 2023. The national average is 306%. The highest growth seen was in the mountain area region of the US at 476% appreciation since 1991. Here in the Midwest, East, North, Central, we've experienced a 231 home price appreciation since 1991. So you can see owning has been a solid investment over the years. All right, 
This shows, this graph shows the average number of offers on a closed sale. And the pink is the multiple offer crazy years, unicorn years during the pandemic. But the blue indicates the non-pandemic years. And I said to myself, why are we at 2.5%? That seems really high. But then I started thinking about my properties and how, you know, if a seller is aspirational uh, in the pricing, they may get an offer that is low in their minds and they reject it. Or there are things that do fall apart. We have seen some people who, you know, thought they could afford the interest rates and then something happened. But then there are still some multiple offers going on out there. There are certain segments of the real estate market here in Chicago where if you're a first time buyer and you're looking for a single family home in the five to $700,000 range, you can pretty much bet you're going to be part of a multiple offer. So that is in addition to showing and foot traffic, another indicator of just how strong the demand has been. All right. Median number of days on the market, less than unicorn years. And again, the pink is the pandemic years where there was the flight to single family homes. You can see that the number of days on market of 50 is well below pre-pandemic years. So things are selling quicker than before. All right. Inventory. The national numbers are just like the local numbers. Inventory is down, down, down. There is not as much to sell. And that certainly reflects on how many closed sales we had. We can't sell it if we don't have it available to show you. This chart is the new listing stabilizing. This is a very optimistic chart. And I'll tell you why. If you look at the black dotted line, it shows how the number of homes on the market would have gone if it were a typical year. But the number of homes on the market, new listings, is actually flattening out a bit closer to the numbers from previous years. So this tells me the market is stabilizing, coming back. It's where we're going to see. All right. This is a national by state look at the change in inventory year over year. November 23 versus 22. Illinois in the orange shows that we are way down in inventory versus last year, which is borne out by where we are in Chicago. If you want to see my previous episode on where the downtown Chicago real estate market is, click the link and uh, take a look at that. But you'll see that inventory everywhere is flat or down. Nobody's increasing really in inventory. And then this is month over month. And you'll see, again, we're down, but not down by as much as year over year. So that's a positive sign. That's a quick look at what's going on in the housing market. Let me just give you a quick summary. If you're a buyer and you're thinking about buying but not sure, here's what to expect. Expect probably a little bit more inventory, but not huge inventory. Everybody's saying that prices may go up a little bit, but not a lot. Interest rates will go down a little bit, not a lot. It's just going to be kind of a good year to be in the market and doing something. Um, if you are a seller, you need to be priced where you should be. In other words, inventory is low, but buyers are not striking at aspirational prices. They'll sit and watch you. So if you're priced $30,000 higher than the unit just like you, expect to either get a low offer or not to sell. You need to be priced at the market. Remember, price appreciation is not going to go up a whole lot. But people are out there, buyers are out there. So if you're thinking about making a move, it's a very good time to make a move. And remember, I give you these facts to help you make a decision about whether or not to buy or sell and how best to buy or sell. But the decision is always up to you. And when you're looking for information about your micro neighborhood or comparables directly for your property, please reach out to me. That's what I do is I give you all the facts so you can make a decision. Happy 2024. Happy New Year. I wish you the best in health, joy, prosperity. May this be your year. And if I can help in any way, please reach out. I'm Ann Rossley with Beard and Warner. Let's connect.